Hi everyone, Knoopsy here, and this is the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2, the successor to the very important, very popular Xiaomi Mi Mix that really changed the way we saw phone design as a whole. Phones at the time had very thick bezels, they were unsightly, they were all 16x9, and the Xiaomi Mi Mix came in and made 18x9 sort of the norm, and minimal, very thin bezels kind of the standard for phone design. And since then, pretty much every major phone manufacturer is embracing 18x9 aspect ratios, as well as the new very minimal, very thin bezel look. And whether you love this new trend or you hate it, it's definitely the way the whole industry is going. So what's the new Xiaomi Mi Mix 2 actually like? Well, in all honesty, it's a really great, beautiful phone, but it does have a few flaws. Find out more after this. This video is brought to you by NordVPN, one of the best and most trusted VPN services in the world. For more information and a massive discount offer, stay tuned to the end of the video or hit the first link in the description. The Mi Mix 2's main feature is the design. You also really can't beat the build of this phone either. Ceramic on the back, aluminum sides, and the unique part is the minimal bezel 6 inch display. The display itself is LCD and 2560 by 1080 but still looks great. It's vibrant, gets pretty bright, and it's fairly sharp, but the viewing angles are the weakest part of the display. In basically any angle except directly head on, the display pretty much just starts to fade, colors get very muted, blacks get very grey, and it's kind of a weak part about this phone, but it is a small price to pay for such an excellent screen to body ratio. There is a bit of a small chin that's actually beneath the display, and my personal opinion doesn't really look too bad at all. It houses some of the sensors, notification and charging light, as well as the front facing camera. The camera does take some okay photos, but you definitely need to rotate the phone to get some good looking results. Otherwise, you get some really unflattering under the chin shots that definitely you don't want to be taking. So basically, just rotate the phone, it's no real trouble. And now at the top of the phone is an ear speaker replacing the original bone conduction system, which pairs with the bottom speaker for a somewhat loudish stereo experience. The top speaker really isn't great for media consumption, it's actually pretty quiet, but for calls, it's quite great. And now that Xiaomi has actually expanded band compatibility for North America, here in Canada, my TELUS SIM card works perfectly for calls, texting, and data. But heading back to the back of this phone to check out that design one more time, the ceramic just looks great. It looks super classy and is scratch resistant, but if you drop this, it's probably gonna get riggedy, riggedy, wrecked, son! A very nice looking and feeling case is included though, so definitely put it on if you don't want to totally shatter your phone. And surrounding the camera is an 18 karat gold ring for some really strange reason, no complaints here, but below that, the fingerprint scanner is also very fast and very accurate. But there are a few issues and a few omissions you definitely need to know about before actually considering this phone. So number one, there's no headphone jack, but there is a dongle included, there's no wireless charging, and no water resistance or a micro SD card slot. But despite these negatives, the phone packs in other key flagship traits mainly for specifications and performance. There's a Snapdragon 835, 6 or 8 gigabytes of RAM, and 128 gigabytes of storage. So really a lot of key stuff for good performance, and that performance definitely shows through. For basic things like just social media browsing, watching videos, using the phone daily, to more intensive things like playing very graphically intensive games, this phone can usually keep up with everything. But one of the main flaws personally for me is the software. It has gotten better than previous versions, now with MIUI 8.5 on top of Android 7.1.1. If you really know anything about MIUI, it's a huge departure from stock Android in many areas, and while I'm personally a big fan of stock Android and the Pixel Launcher, as you pretty much all know, I can see the appeal to MIUI still. However, here it definitely feels a bit mildly unfinished, there's some real buggy traits here and there that are kind of annoying, and some very strange, very weird UI elements. And being in North America, I've had some issues with my personal variants. So I have to load on Google Play services in the Play Store myself. It's very easy overall, really no trouble. But I've been having some issues with Gmail and a few other applications as well, with some very annoying inconsistencies. And because I definitely really miss stock Android, I had to load on Nova Launcher and do some customization, and it makes the experience much better for daily usage, but the issues and glitches still definitely remain. 
Another very annoying thing is the battery capacity downgrade. It's literally a 1000 milliamp hour reduction from the original Mi Mix. It's 3400 milliamp hours down from 4400 milliamp hours. No idea why they even really considered doing this, doesn't really seem very fair at all in my opinion, except for cost cutting measures, but you still get some pretty good battery life. You can pretty much get a full day of usage regularly and a few hours the next day sometimes just for some very light usage in the morning. Now, moving on to the camera, it's pretty decent, it's 12 megapixels, but in my opinion, it's one of the major flaws of this phone as well. The shutter can be a bit slower than I'm used to on most phones, so you get a lot of blurry results, especially with HDR on, and it's just really not a great overall shooting experience. Photos outdoors are okay with some good colors and some decent sharpness, but pretty much everything else is just okay and not great. But indoors in low light, things definitely take a nosedive. There's lots of noise, lots of blur. Basically in low light, it's pretty much unusable. And video recording is definitely fine, but stabilization and the overall look could definitely be better. If you're buying this phone, it's just really not for the camera. Okay, so in summary, the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2 is generally a really good overall phone. It's absolutely beautiful, it's incredibly well built, but the two flaws being the software experience and the camera experience. But let's just say that all the software glitches and bugs are eventually fixed in the future, and if you don't have any of the Google Play service or Gmail issues I experienced, and if you don't mind the overall camera experience as well with the kind of slow shutter and mediocre pictures and videos, then you're honestly going to really enjoy this phone, especially at its very reasonable mid-range price of around $550 USD, with free shipping at the link in the description down below at gearbest.com. It's honestly quite a good value for the amount of phone you get here, especially that build. NordVPN is one of the world's best VPN services, with 1,000 servers in 61 countries do all the awesome VPN things that you want to do. Things like watching streaming content from other countries, getting better privacy, and if you're in countries that actually block certain web access, NordVPN works in China and the Middle East, so you're pretty much covered. With a huge amount of operating system compatibility, unlimited bandwidth, and military-grade encryption, NordVPN pretty much has it all. Try it risk-free for 30 days and use the coupon code KNOOPSY for 70% off your purchase. And that's a pretty great deal. Link down below in the description. And that's pretty much it for this video. So what do you think of the Xiaomi Mi Mix 2? Are you going to buy one? Do you like the overall design? I want to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. As well as if you know how to fix some of those Gmail issues I experienced because it's kind of annoying. Like this video, subscribe, and thank you for watching.